trip here. Today's a little bit different video. I'm going to talk about the death of civility. If it's not dead, it's very challenged at this time. And I don't mean just uh, the political realm, but mostly I'm talking here about the social realm. Please don't think I'm just some old man who's moralizing and wishing things could be like they like they once were. We've had a lot of a lot of stress and and strife in society in the sixties and seventies, the Vietnam War, civil rights, the women's movement, so many things. But this is different today. I'm talking more of the, of the interpersonal level. The way that we deal with each other. And again, politics aside. So I'm having today my, my hot tea, my honey, vanilla, chamomile. This is the very last tea bag that I just put in here. The last one. Still kind of hot. And I have Mr. Bunny, I remember him, for reinforcement in case things don't go well. Let me get into it. These are 50 ways, however many, I don't know, that we can improve on civility and we can all improve on it. Me, you, all of us. Smile more. I know I don't smile enough. Respect your co-workers. Watch your volume talking. Don't talk loud and long on the phone. Don't walk around with a Bluetooth in public talking to yourself. It looks dumb. And it makes people feel awkward when you greet someone when you're walking. And they don't say hi back to you. Take your phone call outside if you're waiting in line. Sometimes you have to take the call if it's important or an emergency. But telling friends to pick up a six pack of beer is not an emergency. Besides, it's no, it's no fun for us in line behind you to have to listen to your conversation don't drive your vehicle while texting or talking on your cell phone for business or pleasure. And by the way, the handheld devices are also distracting. You say your call is worth more than my life or yours or somebody else's. Your business is not important, more important than mine. I've seen accidents. A little girl that used to work at a, at a, at a restaurant she was driving home at night talking to her boyfriend on a cell phone and and she ran into a tree. She was killed instantly. And the church where she went to, the grandmother fixed a little place there, a seat with some flowers. And she visits there sometimes and just sits there. I've seen her, it's the saddest sight. Don't lay your cell phone on the table at meals to take calls if you're dining with others. And don't blab on the phone during meals or in a crowd. It makes other people feel awkward when you're talking real loud and long. And don't turn around at your table with your guests trying not to bother them and start yapping on your cell phone in my face at the next table. Put down the phone and talk to your friends. As you see, I had to make some notes. So I really worked on this. Please don't laugh. Don't blab on the cell phone in line at the checkout. And if you're a cashier who's serving me, put the phone down and acknowledge me. When someone is talking to you, look up from your desk or your phone or your activity and look at me. 
I had a a commander, a colonel one time who who talked to me, people that way. He wouldn't look up, he would just continue with his work. Here's one. Wash your hands after visiting the restroom and don't stay in the in the stall yapping on your phone. It's just crude and someone else may need to, to use it. If you can choose between a cell phone and a landline to call me, always call me on the landline because a lot of cell phone connections are not good and they lag. And cut people and strangers a little slack. They might be having a bad day or got some bad news. A cranky salesperson, a, a rude workmate, co-worker. What happened in their life? Getting ugly just prolongs the violence, the, the rudeness, and invites retaliation. Of course, some people are just plain jerks. Yeah, we get that. And at one time or another, we have all been plain jerks. You don't always have to be first. Don't cut in line at the store, at the restaurant, or in your car. In the long run, a few minutes don't really matter in your hyper-important life or mine. Be punctual. Now, that is one thing I'm good about. I am super punctual. And people know they can count on me to be there. And I was always like that. So, one good thing for me. Don't let your pet mess in your neighbor's yard or on the city sidewalk or the parking lot or, or in the park. Keep your dog at home, or take a scoop, or just don't have a pet. Ditch the profanity and the filthy language. I know all the dirty words, and I've used or thought all of them. It does not make you a tough guy. And by the way, more girls are cursing nowadays. Don't try to fit in with the guys cursing, whether it's work, like, like at work, to prove yourself. It just lowers you to their level. You don't have to try to appear to be as, as tough as the guys. Treat elderly people with a bit more dignity. Hold the doors. Help them to the car. Offer a seat on the bus. Don't take handicapped parking. You know, and if you, if someone else is handicapped and, and you're driving their car and you're alone and you're, you're in good shape, just having a handicap sticker doesn't mean you have that you have the moral right to park in a handicap place just because you're, you're driving their car if they're not with you. Uh, don't talk with your mouth full when you're eating. Be careful what foods you bring to the office. Some are highly pungent. I can remember this girl that used to bring fish to the office. It was awful, warming it up in the microwave. You could smell it all the way from the front, all the way back to inside my private office. Watch your breath in your office or social setting. Beware of garlic and onions. Dress better. Fashion sense and modesty seem to be mostly dead anyhow, that we should all dress better. And don't wear shirts with vulgar writing on it. Dress modestly, especially your children. Where, where are you parents? Make sure your body is designed for what you want to fit it into also. Think twice before you get tattoos or stick pieces of metal in your face or your body. I know this is a cultural thing and I'm not going to say anything more about it because I, I don't understand why people want to mutilate their bodies. Don't tailgate me or honk at me when I'm going the speed limit and I'm trying to pass someone and on, on my right. I guess you can reverse that if you live in 
in, in the UK or, or Sweden or New Zealand as they drive on the dirt other side of the road, right? Does the law mean anything? Everyone exceeds the speed limit. We're a nation of lawbreakers. It's not okay. Parents should set an example, especially for their children. Like me, I drive the speed limit or even less, and everybody passes me on the highway, especially on the, the, in the interstate. Oh, and on the road, do not ever cut me off. Don't run red lights. And every day I see somebody do it. Say please and thank you. Don't worry, we're more than half through. Try being extra nice to people. Try smiling. When you're confronting bad service or a rude person, make it a game to see if you can make them smile. I do that sometimes. Give them a couple of tries before you totally write them off. Quit gossiping at home, in public, in the workplace. We don't want to hear about it unless you're having an affair with someone. Then we want to hear about that one. Yeah. Remember people's names and faces. Now, I cannot remember names and faces. I'm very good with numbers, but it's a big problem for me because some people think that I'm, that I'm rude. I have a small degree of prosopognosia. That's face blindness, where you can't recognize faces. On special occasions, or to thank someone for a gift, call them, talk to them in person, don't text them, post it on social media. That's superficial. And it's like Facebook friends. Don't let your kids misbehave when out to dinner or at the movies or church or a public place. That is one thing that does get to me. They're your responsibility. You brought them into the world. Remember their table manners. Leave them at home until they're older if you can't control them. No one thinks that whining kids are cute or adorable. They're just kids is not a good excuse. If you're at a restaurant, sit in a corner with them. Clean up after them. Don't leave a mess for the hard-working waitress or waiter. We've all seen that. Don't bring the germs to work. Don't send the kids sick to school. It costs money. It costs other people money or they get sick. Their kids get sick. They miss, they miss days at work. That's really arrogant to send children to school sick or to go to work yourself sick. Don't have the conversation. Someone else might have something to say. Nearly through. Don't floss in public or walk around with a toothpick in your mouth after a meal. I once saw somebody flossing in a library. Return calls return emails and messages promptly or fairly soon. I returned calls pretty fast and I did at work too. I returned emails and all calls within 24 hours. Don't talk or don't talk across me when someone else is sitting at the other side of, of me. Ask to trade places so you can talk side by side. Turn your music down in your car or on your phone when you're in public. Don't speak loudly at me when you're talking. And if I pause for a moment to say something, it's not an excuse for you to keep talking. Don't litter or throw trash out car windows and chewing gum. Don't stick chewing gum under the table. Don't let your kids do it. And that's it. I don't think that civility is entirely dead. But I... I do believe that it's badly wounded. Maybe there's some things on here that I missed. 
feel free to add to them. Just letting my tea get cold. It's just right. So good. So thanks for indulging me. Please don't think of me as a, a ranting old man. Because I'm neither ranting nor old. Thank you and we'll talk later.